40 years ago this year, radical Black Panther Joanne Chesimard, also known as Asada Shakur, was convicted of murdering a New Jersey State trooper named Werner Forster. A few years later, she escaped from prison and fled to Cuba, where she has lived under the protection of the Castro regime ever since. The Obama administration reestablished diplomatic relations with Cuba last year, so is there any prospect that the Trump administration can bring her back from that island to justice here? New Jersey Governor Chris Christie hopes so. He joins us now. Governor, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tucker. So I know you've been, you've been following this uh, for many years, so you will know the answer to this. Did the Obama administration make any effort, as it was normalizing relations with Cuba and negotiating over those uh, normalized relations, to bring this fugitive back to the United States? None that we're aware of, Tucker. I mean, you know, I wasn't in, obviously, on the meetings that were happening in secret um, between the Obama administration and Cuba, but this much we know that in cold blood she murdered a New Jersey State Police Trooper uh, f convicted 40 years ago this week uh, escaped from a New Jersey prison when she was being transferred and fled to Cuba and has been protected by the Castro regime paid by them uh, supported by them and yet we normalized relations with a, with a country that uh, will not return someone who was rightfully convicted under our justice system of murdering a state trooper. It's, it's outrageous, and I've been saying it's outrageous since I became governor. It is outrageous. What can be done now? Well, listen, I hope that what the Trump administration is going to do is before we take any further steps with a relationship with Cuba, um, that they say, listen, first and foremost, return this fugitive from justice back to New Jersey so she can rightfully serve the rest of her term for murdering a police officer. Everyone says they support what the police do every day. They acknowledge they put their lives on the line. Well, this gentleman not only put his life on the line, he gave his life. Yes. And his family has lived for the last 40 years with the knowledge that his murderer has been living with impunity in an island uh, is protected by that government. It's outrageous. And I think, uh, you know, this is something that Secretary of State Tillerson and others in the Trump administration should make a top priority in any dealings they have with Cuba. Uh, so you've been around government and worked in government for many, many years. Given your experience, do you think it is plausible that intelligence agencies supervised by the Obama White House surveilled Donald Trump's campaign, his staff, communications in and out of Trump Tower? There certainly doesn't seem to be any evidence of that at this point, Tucker. And you know, I know from having spent seven years as a U.S. attorney that uh, the FISA court and the way that works in, in foreign intelligence surveillance activities, um, it, is, it is very, very difficult to get that type of activity going. You have to go and convince an independent judge. And as a prosecutor, it was our job to provide that information along with the Department of Justice to do it. So I don't see any evidence of that at this point in time. You know, we'll, we'll continue to, to listen, but I can tell you from my experience, that kind of stuff is very difficult to get. Kellyanne Fitzpatrick, um, Kellyanne Conway, uh, this Sunday on one of the shows said that she believed at some point you would be joining their administration, the Trump administration. What, what, what job would that be? I have no idea. Well, um, what, what do you want? <laughs> well, I'm not going to negotiate with you, Tucker, unless you're an agent uh, for the Trump administration. <laughs> no. uh, but, but, the, but the fact, and I know you're not, so we're going to have no negotiations. Listen. I made it very clear to the, to the president that I wanted to complete my term as governor of New Jersey uh, and that it would be something that would have to be very, very unusual to make me leave this job early. I asked for eight years and absent being president myself, which did not work out, um, I didn't want to leave. Um, and so um, will I ever go work there? I have no idea. Um, listen, the president has been a very good friend, dear friend of mine and Mary Pat's for the last 15 years. And so I talk to him frequently. I give him the best advice I can give him and sometimes I just sit and we just talk about things that have nothing to do with government and we talk about uh, families and sports and other things we're friends we've been friends for a long time so I'm always yeah. going to be there to help him but whether I'll ever work in that administration in, in his administration or not um, I don't so, have a crystal ball so when, when was the last time you talked to him and what advice did you give him ah, I talked to him a couple of nights ago and I'm not going to tell the advice I gave him because that's the way you give advice to a president of the United States you do it privately and yeah. quietly and just between the two of you and I never talk about the advice I give to my my friend, the president. Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey, thanks for joining us. Tucker, thanks for having me. And thank you for putting a spotlight on the Joanne Chesimard issue. It's a really important issue that all Americans should really care about. It deserves one for sure. Thank, thank you. you.